right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He is uh, looks like he is 37 years old, and he's sharing a story, both what happened in the past and what's happening right now in his situation with his ex-wife. And you're going to see in this story, guys, eight years ago when he was with his ex, out of nowhere, she wanted to open up the marriage so she could go have her fun and play with multiple partners. In the meantime, still have him around to pay the bills and be there for her. This guy wasn't having it. He said, no way. She still persisted by trying to bring people over. And ultimately, the marriage ended. However, at the time, they had a five-year-old daughter. Now this guy's this guy then recovered from that whole divorce and now he's on his own doing well for himself and he's dating multiple women in their 20s he's having a rotation if you will and after the divorce guys you're gonna see real quick and I don't want to reel too much to no surprise his his ex was out there riding the carousel but now she's in her 30s I think 36 and let's just say that her prospects have come down substantially because she's gotten older she's less appealing to guys and now she wants to get back with him and she's using the, the, the stress that their daughter has been having in school as an excuse to try to get this guy back. And you're going to see here, guys, that this guy, how this guy's handling it. But this guy has a lot of questions about uh, why things are the way they are with, with the ex. Why is she doing these things? He doesn't quite get it. Or maybe he gets it, but he wants to have some uh, reassurement on that. And also my opinion, as well as you guys, your opinion on how to handle things. It's quite interesting. But once again, guys, here's another story about a guy who whose lady wants an open marriage. This is becoming more and more frequent. The Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0 world, as I like to call it. And uh, this guy laid down the law, said not happening. While other guys in the past have been ones to just deal with this because they want to lose the woman. So more guys are being strong and saying no way. But anyhow, guys, I'm going to get more into this because it's definitely cool to see how this guy handles things. And and, and it's always, as of course, very entertaining how the wife comes back, or the ex-wife comes back little payback on his part. So it starts off, he says, Hi, SSM. I've been watching your videos for some time now, and after watching your video about how women always come crawling back, and he said in parentheses, the Crazy Kim video, I wanted to share my own story with you and your viewers, and hopefully you guys could give me some advice and insights onto all of this. I need advice on how to move forward with my family and insights on why my ex is acting like this. So guys, he's not look, just looking for help from me, he's looking for help from all of you. So definitely guys, if, if you're not one to comment normally, by all means, comment away after you hear this story to help this guy out because he's looking for guidance. This is a, We're a brotherhood here, so we got to help each other out. He says the back story. Back in 2013, and he says, uh, I was married to my ex-wife, Jessica. And right now she's 36, so back then she would have been about 28. At the time, we had a five-year-old daughter, Jane, who's currently 13 right now. Jessica wanted to try out an open relationship with some of her guy friends, but I wasn't interested. She stood her ground and started to bring guys and gals, potential F buddies, for us around the house, but I always shut it down. Good for you, man. I mean... Right then and there, let's be honest here, the second she wanted to open up the marriage and bring other people in there, it's over. Okay? End of story. It's over. All right? Because believe me, if she was truly deeply in love with you, she wouldn't want other dudes. She wouldn't want you, other women, touching you. End of story. But it's the classic, I want to have my cake and eat it too, or however the expression is. And I'm aware the expression is actually the opposite of what the expression is, but it's so hardwired into me to say the, the cake and eat it too, but you get my point. And she wants to have that guy there, the, her husband, resources, and all that. But it doesn't work that way, okay? And this guy's not standing for it. I wanted to keep my daughter away from this nonsense, but it was, but it was hard due to my, my ex's extreme insistence on the open marriage. Yeah, he's trying to protect his daughter, but welcome to today's world, guys. We had shouting matches all the time, and she even called me a coward for wanting to be faithful and monogamous. A coward? This guy, she's twisting it around and make him the bad guy because he wants his wife to stay faithful to him, because he wants to stay faithful to her, and pretty much continue with the vows they both made. You know, if they're religious under under God or whatever you want to call it, he's he's a coward. Unbelievable. I mean, I love doing these stories, guys, because it's 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 just so amazing to me how people are. Eventually, we end up starting the divorce process in the middle of the year and agreed to 50-50 custody via mediation. 
Good, bro. Get the hell out of there. You should have gotten out of there the second she wanted to open up the marriage. But I guess, I guess, it, I get it was a shock, or you know, there's the element of your daughter. But your daughter, if she was raised in that household, seeing all that. I mean, I did a story a couple weeks ago about a kid that was um, raised in a household where they had the open marriage, uh, a polyamorous relationship, and it really screwed them up. So good for you for ending it and getting your daughter out of that mess. At least when you're around. Our families knew the reason why we split and everyone was frustrated about how it went. Good, I'm glad. Jane didn't understand at the time as she was too young, but thankfully my ex did not poison her against me. I still kept close contact with Jessica's family as I did not want to keep them out of my daughter's life. Also, they still treated me like family even after the divorce. God bless them. That's really great, man. At least they know that she's the one that screwed it up. Uh, Jessica and I remained civil and were good co-parents throughout the years, celebrating birthdays and important moments together with our daughter as a family unit. Okay, so far so good in that front. Since we both made similar salaries, I didn't really pay much in alimony or child support, and everything was fine for the most part, though Jessica and I would sometimes leave Jane with, with me Jessica would sometimes leave Jane with me for extended periods of time, probably to keep riding the carousel. However, as she got older, her dates started to be less frequent. Ha, huh, imagine that. She was getting older, less, less dates, less partners. I wonder why. She wanted to have this open marriage when she was in her late 20s, in her prime. Now that she's years older, in her 30s, she's not as visually appealing, to put it mildly, as she was in her 20s. And watch, guys, what happens now that she's obviously now has less prospects. It says here, hang on, I lost, I lost my place, guys. Uh, she and I, on the other hand, didn't, uh, me on the other hand, I didn't start dating anyone until Jane was a bit older so that I could explain my situation to her to avoid any confusion. Good. I'm glad after his divorce he took his time. No rush. And also, they didn't want to confuse the five-year-old daughter. That's really good. He was thinking of her. I guarantee you, I don't think her mom... Well, let me rephrase that. Her mom wasn't thinking about that. Her mom, the second she was set free, was off riding the carousel and having a good old time with every dude in town. At first, I thought dating in my 30s would be hard. But I very quickly found out that girls in their mid-20s find me attractive. And soon, I had a good set of friends to keep me company when I had free time. I'm not surprised. You're in your 30s. They're in their 20s. They, generally speaking, a majority, a lot of women like guys that are older. They have their lives together. They have more more mature than the guys in their 20s. And no surprise, have resources. Just as long as you're aware of that. And remember, as I say all the time, a lot of guys that didn't weren't very popular with the girls when they were teens and high school and college in their 20s, all of a sudden they're paying attention to them big time in their 30s. Be very careful because a lot of times these girls in their 20s, they're looking to settle down. They're looking for a guy that has it together, has a job, has some money, has some income, and they're ready to settle up. They've been, they themselves have been riding the carousel for years. So I'm sure some genuinely like you, but be aware, just be careful that some could just simply be looking for a, a nice guy. But it sounds to me through this, this this thing, this guy isn't your stereotypical white knight nice guy. Because obviously a nice guy would have stayed in the marriage before and let his wife walk all over him. A guy with some integrity and values and self-respect would walk away like this guy did. So I don't think, I, I'm going to probably guess that most of them don't see as this nice guy to settle. They're just looking for a cool guy that has his shit together to have fun with. I hope. Anyhow. He says here... I made sure that my daughter or family never knew about any of my so-called friends. I'm a private person. I don't use social media whatsoever. And even if anyone did ask, I was seeing someone, I would always change the subject. Good. It's your, it's your business, not theirs. And bro, like you, I'm off social media. I have I deactivated my Facebook account last summer. I, I logged in once just to see what was going on. That's it. I'm never on Instagram. I'm done. He says, on with the official story. Uh, Jane had recently started to have problems with online learning, so Jessica and I agreed to, to family therapy to help improve Jane's grades and any other problems that our family may have had at the time. I assured the whole, I assured, I assumed the whole session would be just about Jane's o online school life, but I was in for a very rude awakening. In the weeks following up to our first session, Jessica started asking me and Jane weird questions every time the three of us were in the same vicinity. 
pay attention to the red flags, pay attention to your gut. He knew something was off and wait till you see guys what it was. The questions always pertain to us being a complete family again. Get the hell out of here. After all that, she thinks you're going to get back with her. Notice that she wants to get back together now and she's testing the waters because now that she doesn't have as many dudes chasing after her like she did in her 20s, now she's ready to settle again and have that meal ticket and she's going to use, you're going to see, the daughter to try to get the guy to come back to her. Uh, Jane didn't really have a concrete answer due to her stressing over school. She would always reply, I'm not sure or I don't know. Well, I, on the other hand, didn't really humor her until one day she started to act rude and harsh towards me. I asked her why, but she just said to wait for our therapy session to know everything. Right then and there, I'd say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'll go to therapy with the daughter. You can go to therapy with the daughter. But if you're going to be rude and disrespectful to me, uh-uh, not happening. We're divorced. We're not married anymore. I, I did my part. I tried to make it work. You're the one that ruined it. My gut was telling me that something bad was going to happen on that day, but I went along with it anyway for the sake of our daughter, Jane. See, you knew. The day with the therapist arrived, and as soon as our session started, Jessica went off on me. Under what? On what grounds? Jessica was furious that I was in an open relationship with young women, even though I rejected the idea back when she and I were married. You're not in an open relationship with those women. You are dating, you're casually dating multiple women, a rotation, if you will. That's different. If you were married again and seeing other women on the side, then I could see in some way how she would be annoyed by that prospect. Or even if you were maybe just in a real, an absolute, without a shadow of doubt, committed relationship and still doing that, maybe on some level you could see her case like, well, what the hell? But even then, it wouldn't matter because guess what? You're not married anymore. Your life is your business. I calmly told her that we would discuss it another time, but my ex was not having it. Last time I checked, you were there for the daughter, not for her to vent about her frustrations. She demanded, demanded, that we talk about it now and that Jane's online learning will be the next topic. I would have left right then and there. I'd say, I'm here for the daughter, nothing more. And I'd walk. I asked Jane if that was all right with her, and she agreed. So did the therapist. My ex-wife ranted about how I was a disgusting human being and hypocrite for dating these women. She even brought up their names, ages, workplaces, colleges, Instagrams, etc. How on God's green earth does she possibly know all the details about them, unless she's obviously stalking you? Maybe even hired a, a private investigator. I don't know, because you're obviously not displaying, displaying your life on social media. She's stalking you, man. That's, that's what I think. And it's none of her freaking business. And also you're there for the daughter. She knew about my friends better than I did. I had to explain that I wasn't in a serious relationship with any of them and how they sleep with other people besides me. Jessica tried to argue that I shouldn't be I shouldn't agree to that. I should have I should have agreed to that years ago and then started berating me again. You're not you were married before. You committed to her. She didn't commit to you. Now you're on your own. And also, it's none of her damn business what you do in your personal life. I got to the point where the therapist told my ex to see things from my view as well, but she just screamed and argued with her. Oh yeah, you definitely want to get back with her, given her her, her temperament here and her screaming and yelling and, and gaslighting and blaming you. Yeah, I, oh, I'll definitely come back to you now, sure. The truth was, I wasn't in that type of relationship with anyone. Some of the girls that my ex brought up were flings that go back months back. And the most recent hookup I, I, I had was over two months ago. The reality is, her prospects have dried up. She's on her own. She doesn't want to be a single mom. And so she wants to hate on you because she can see you got it made. I've told you guys before, there is no greater way to get even when a woman has completely disrespected and dishonored and treat you terribly than moving on and dating more beautiful and younger women. And she knows it. This, this is an element of the rage. Jessica's whole point was that I was doing uh, the open thing, even though I wasn't, and that we were supposed to get back together for our daughter's sake since they both need stability now, but I've ruined everything. If he got back with her, let's just play devil's advocate here, it'd be a mess for the daughter because the daughter would see them in a, in a marriage living together, miserable, fighting, tension, all this uh, negativity. 
And the daughter would think, oh, well, that's just how life is. And will ultimately very likely be in relationships like that going forward. And this guy, no way he wants that for his daughter. And I'm going to assume mom wants, doesn't want that. But she's using the daughter to try to get this guy back. Uh, the therapist tried to explain and even justify both of our sides. If the therapist is trying to justify her viewpoint on this, the therapist is out of the mind. I've told you before about a lot of these therapists and marriage counselors. They generally will side with the wife and try to make the people get back together when they shouldn't a lot of the time. Again, this guy should have walked the second she started making the therapy session not about the daughter, but he stayed there anyway. But Jessica would not hear, any, would not hear it that way. She wanted me to apologize to her and basically beg and crawl to have a relationship with her and be a family. She wants you to beg and get on your hands and knees to get back with her who's acting like a nutcase who screwed up the marriage the first time around. What, mean, what makes you think she's not going to treat you like crap, screw up a second time around amongst many other things? She had her chance. She, she blew it. And that's that. But again, does she want to own up to her Messing things up? Nope. It's a lot easier to twist it around and make him to be the bad guy. And how, let's get back to the stalking thing, her knowing all these details about these different girls he's had, he's had flings with. It's not an open relationship he's having. He's just casually dating and having hookups. He's enjoying his life. He's happy. She's miserable, so she wants to make him miserable. And she doesn't have any pros prospects anymore. And how it wasn't fair or morally right that I was sleeping with people in their 20s while she was being an overworked, wait for it, single mom. Max tried to bring up my daughter in the conversation, but Jane just said that she had no idea about any of this and didn't want to be part of it. I also, if this guy stayed, I would have had the, if it was me, well, I would have left the second she started making it about her and not about the daughter, but also if I would have stayed, I would have asked the daughter to please step out and say my piece so the daughter has done have to hear all this. I mean, come on here. The whole conversation was exhausting, and unfortunately my daughter only got five minutes to discuss her problems before the session ended. Now the daughter's going to walk out of there with even more issues than she had when she walked in. As we were leaving, my ex tried, tried to keep arguing with me, but I just told her that she isn't my wife anymore and I, could, and I could do whatever I wanted. You're damn right. Again, she tried to bring Jane into the conversation, but she just shouted at us as she was not able to convey or talk about her problems at school during the session. Things got very ugly and now it's tense between us. That's her doing. That's her fault. Not yours. I know you know this, but that's hers. I've apologized to my daughter many times, and thankfully she doesn't blame me as much as her mother. You got nothing. You can apologize how it went, apologize that she had to go through that, but it's not your fault. You're, the ex, the girl's mother, did all that crap. And most certainly don't apologize for having your own private adult life seeing those women. Don't apologize for that and don't change that for, for anybody. That's your business. She's still struggling with online learning and now my ex-wife is being a piece of crap and is making our lives harder. I understand that she's getting older and is afraid to be alone. Ding, ding, ding. But why take it out on me and our daughter? Well, I'll come back to that. Why am I the villain? And, G and gee damn, why is it my fault that she can't live her fantasy of having a complete family unit while sleeping with other dudes? I'm planning on switching our family therapy sessions to solo sessions for Jane only to discuss her problems and hopefully it will help out with her schooling. But right now, I just need to vent and hear advice. Thank you, SSM. Okay, here we go. So, the reason, I, I know I covered this, but I'm going to get back into it now. The, the ex is going crazy like she is because she, well, in her 20s when she wanted to open up the marriage, was obviously higher on the totem pole. She's now come down the totem pole because she's gotten older. I don't know how she looks physically now, but in terms of like maybe she put on some weight or cut her hair, I don't know what. But the point is, she's not in her 20s anymore, so she's less appealing. So there's less guys that are into her, and it's not as easy as it once was to get dudes. And she's feeling alone. She sees this guy, you, if you're listening, I'm sure you're listening, dating lots and lots of young women in their 20s, which is obviously pissing her off big time, so good for you. And she hates uh, hates that, so now she wants to make, she's now, now she's miserable, now she wants to make you miserable, okay? That's how a lot of people are in this world, guys. If they don't have what they feel like they should have and be entitled to, they hate on anybody else that has that, or they try to sabotage their success. I'm sure many of you guys out there that are happy, have a good life, or are on your purpose to make your lives better, 
have people, or at least had hopefully, that were trying to sabotage it or talk down on you. Believe me, I get it. That's what's going on here. And so she's trying to sabotage it and using the daughter to uh, make it get her way. And that's despicable. That therapy session was for the daughter to help her, not the other way around. So that's what's going on here. Don't I would distance yourself with her as much as possible. I wouldn't even communicate with her beyond anything that you could see at this point that could be written down, like a text or an email. That's it. Talking to her, a conversation, I wouldn't do any of that at all because you need to have proof because I could see her stirring up. Hell hath no fury, you know, you know that saying there. So I would keep track of all things. Any conversation is all written. You can see here in a text or email and keep it strictly the daughter, nothing more. And fortunately, you, her family, obviously, you're cool with her family, and she know they know she's the one who screwed it up. So at least you have some allies there to help you with the daughter, hopefully. But at this point, I have nothing to do with her beyond what's absolutely necessary for the daughter. That's it. Keep all communications that you can have a written record, a written, a record of, text or email. That's it. Okay. And she's just going to be angry and pissed off. And mark my word, she's going to because she has not, nothing else in her life. She's going to try to sabotage things and make things difficult. Mark my words. So definitely have your lawyer on standby in case she tries to alter things in terms of the, the uh, custody agreements and all that. As for your daughter, I would certainly do your best to help her out. No more sessions with your crazy ex. Just you can go with your daughter and help her out and do the best you can. And for your personal life, don't let the fact that what she's done and says about you and your personal life, dating and hooking up with other girls in their 20s, uh, derail you from that. If you're having a good time doing that and, and, and the girls are cool and you're obviously wearing protection and disposing of that protection, you don't want to get any of these girls pregnant and of course catch anything, okay, keep doing what you're doing. But don't don't stop doing that because maybe your daughter is aware of this now. You know, she's 13, believe me. Nowadays, she's aware of plenty of things. You can keep doing that. I just wouldn't bring these girls around when your daughter's staying with you. End of story. So, but that's what's going on, man. She's jealous. She's pissed off. She's screwed up. Doesn't want to admit it. So she's making you out to be the bad guy, even though everybody obviously knows, both her family and you and her family and probably everybody in town, she's the one, the cause of the, of the marriage uh, imploding. End of story. But like I said, guys, I talked about by human nature. People don't want to admit they screwed up. So it's easy to hate on everybody else and blame somebody else. Actually, accepting personal responsibility for your foul-ups. And of course, when somebody's miserable, it's a lot easier just to blame everybody else and hate everybody else for being happy. That's how it is. Misery loves company. Anyhow, man, so just, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy you divorced her. I'm so happy you, you started over. You're doing well for yourself. So keep doing well for yourself. Be a good dad for your daughter. Focus on your life, yourself. Be happy. Hang out with your friends, your family. If you like dating these, these girls in their 20s, have a blast. You know, just be careful. Don't get roped into one of these girls. And that's all you can do. And just keep your your crazy ex at a distance because she's only going to get worse. Believe me, do you think any guy wants to be with her given her attitude and personality? Hell no. And obviously, the looks department is definitely for her. So good job for staying strong and being a good dad. So all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below and let me what you think about this. And also, guys, please comment below. Let this guy know what you think about these situations. Any of you guys have been in through an ugly divorce or been through anything like this before, Help this guy out. Share your opinions. He's going to read them all. You can have 10,000 comments here. This guy will probably read them all, and this will help him out. we got to help each other out, guys. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.